right, let's talk about fears and why they're rational and a quick way of just busting through fear really, really quickly. Driven Mofos, welcome back to The Underestimated Entrepreneur. Thank you for joining me. If you haven't already done so, please rate and review this podcast. All you need to do is click on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to this on and just make sure you hit the star button. It'll come up with five stars and if you could give it a five star review, I would love you long time or whatever star rating that you want to give it. The more star reviews that we get, the more it pushes out to more people, the more it helps. First of all, I want to apologize if the sound quality isn't the best. We are still in Bali and I'm just using a lapel mic, but I want to make sure that I give these episodes out daily we'll make sure i've got them flowing but i'll make sure that the content quality is great so anyway let's talk about fears today now for those of you who don't know who i am i'm michael mojo founder of mojo human performance institute where we focus on business mindset and lifestyle optimization and the reason why i do these episodes is the most people waste their life and i just don't want you to be one of them so let's talk about fear now in order to have fear most people's fears are irrational because something happens in their life or they get told something by somebody else and so they create this fear now a fear is essentially the perception of more downside or more drawbacks or more disadvantages or more negatives to something than benefits or perceived advantages. So let's say you might be wanting to invest some money and you go, I don't want to invest because of fear. Well, let's say that's true. You have to ask yourself, is that really true? So this is why I love using a journal because I write this stuff down when I have my fears. So is it true that I could lose money financially? Yeah, okay, so then is that a bad fear or a good fear or whatever? I don't know, let's dive into it deeper. So then what I wanna do is ask, where did I get this fear from? Because most people's fears are irrational and they're given to them by people around us. So when our parents say to us, be careful of snakes, we may never have seen a snake apart from on television or in a book. Yet when we do see a snake for the first time, we'll freak out, even if it's a carpet python and it's not venomous or whatever, most people have a reaction like it's a highly deadly object that can kill us. And the reason why that happens is because that fear is given to us or implanted by somebody else. Now, most people's fears are irrational. Like when you look at it, most people's irrational fears are the media. So when the media will talk about a country and they'll say, you know, if you go to this country, they have terrorists, they have stabbings, they have murders, they have all this bad stuff happen. And so you start to create a perception that those countries are like that when they might not be like that at all. It might just be that they have a higher stabbing rate than most other countries around the world. When in fact, it's quite low might be like 0.0001% of the population will ever get stabbed. But you might have an irrational fear around that. Just like most people have an irrational fear around sharks and going for a swim at the beach, when mosquitoes have a higher likelihood of killing you than sharks, yet the media demonize sharks, they don't demonize mosquitoes. And so most people's fears are completely fucking irrational and crazy. And yes, you are way more likely to die of getting malaria or a mosquito bite than you are from a shark attack. Or if you get attacked by a shark, you've got a higher likelihood of dying. But the chances of you dying by a shark attack are a lot less than dying from a mosquito bite and malaria and things like that. We have to go back and then question, are these fears rational or are they rational? Where did they come from? Who taught us this stuff? I mean, the media prey upon people's irrational fears. And because most people live a life based on delusions and fantasies, which I help people to break at the time and show you how to do that. Because most people live with these fantasies and these delusions about how life should be and what it should be like. And then they compare themselves to others. They live in this erratic way of emotional volatilities. And so they'll want high highs, they'll avoid low lows, they want life to be easy and want life to be comfortable and they want life to be simple. And so the media fucking prey upon this shit. Fears will make people irrational, so they'll try to avoid their fears, but also we are very heightened from fear. So we become more heightened in our senses because of fear and worry and concern. You know, if we're walking down the street at nighttime, we're thinking about our goals and our dreams and you hear this noise down a dark alley, straight away you become hypersensitive. And you become hypersensitive because your pupils become more focused or you become more focused. You really start listening for sounds And so now all of your senses become highly heightened because of that. And you become more reactive. Adrenaline cranks up, okay? Blood sugar amps up, insulin amps up. So this all gets us ready for that flight, fight or freeze response. Okay, we're ready to attack, we're ready to do something. And the media use that, right? They'll use it with these big words like horror or tragedy. And so what we do is we become hypersensitive to those things. And then so most people then start making decisions. You know, when we look at the GFC, in Australia, we called it the global financial crisis. In other countries around the world, it was just an economic downturn. But we called it the global financial crisis. This stuff happens a lot. We went from global warming to now climate change to now climate crisis, right? Because the media have to use these words. They find that response rate drops. So first of all, 
global warming, there were plenty of people who came out and said, well, with global warming, this is a consistent pattern that's happened throughout history. The media changed it to climate change. And so now it became a climate change problem, not a global warming problem. Then now it's become a climate crisis. And so you'll hear that word being used quite a lot. Why? Because it makes people more reactive. It makes them hypersensitive. And when they're hypersensitive, they become hyper aware. So when you're walking down the street and you see crisis on the front page of the paper, you naturally look at it. Why? Because you want to see what's going on. The same reason why when you're driving down the road, you miss all the flowers and the beautiful green fields, but you see a car crash and you slow down and you look and you'll be looking for something going on. Why? Because we become hypersensitive for that stuff. So most people then become hypersensitive to fear throughout their life. And then so they start making these irrational decisions based upon the fear that they've got. Now, what do you have to do in order to break that pattern? Well, you've got to question it. You've got to question the fear. Where did it come from? Why do I have it, right? And is this fear true? So that's a question that you really want to ask. Is, is this fear really true? What's the data? So you want to go back to data. Like, let's say you're going to go surfing, but you don't want to go surfing because you're afraid of shark attacks. Go and have a look at the data. Go, what animals kill people the most on this planet? And I think the number one is still mosquitoes. So you go, shit, I don't have a fear upon mosquitoes. So why do I have a fear upon sharks? And when you find out that it's like a thousand to one dying of mosquitoes than what you do sharks, then go, well, why do I fear sharks, but I don't really fear mosquitoes? What's the difference? And then you can start to analyze it. When you start to analyze your fears and you ask the question, is this really true? And you look at data, you can slowly break down your fears. Just like there are a lot of people out there who don't invest because they go, oh, well, remember when this one person on a current affair, you know, this one person invested with a property developer and the property developer ripped them off and then moved overseas. Property developing is risky. Well, yeah, it is, but it's also risky not doing it. Just like it's risky putting money into shares. There are plenty of people who put money into the share market who have no idea what they're doing and they only invest when everything's going really, really well. And what do we know about markets is that when mum and dad investors get involved, the markets are normally going really, really well. And normally when markets are going really, really well, things are going to turn to shit pretty quickly. Just like in the housing market right now, it was really fucking obvious that people are going to get burnt and a lot of people are getting burnt out there. Why? Because they bought houses when the market was massively inflated, hugely. House prices are doubling in some areas. You know that that's crazy, it's erratic. And so now people are getting torched buying houses because they're unintelligent, they haven't thought about things properly, they don't know market cycles, they don't know market trends, they haven't done any research, they don't have any data. And so now those same people, a lot of them will turn around and go, investing in property is risky and the media get hold of it and they go and blast it out there and they say, well, you know, you've got to be careful because builders are going bankrupt and you know, make sure you've got your insurances and make sure this and make sure you hold these people accountable. And so the media cause people to play their fucking victim card instead of educating people. Well, what really went on? Well, here's what happened. The media overinflated how great the market was and why it's the perfect time to buy and the government were going out and throwing a ton of money into helping people buy their first home, which now means you've got a whole bunch of first homeowners going in there with an overinflated idea that they can afford more than what they really can, who have never been involved in a market. And so they go out and they overspend on a property. And then now it's harder for normal people or other investors to go and buy properties. And so now the whole market starts to become inflated. And then now banks get involved and they become greedy. So they start lending money to people who can't really afford stuff and they start changing what's going on. And so then the government allows them to relax policies and all that sort of shit. And so now the market becomes crazy. Then you get more and more builders going out and they go, well, there's a lot of money to be made in the building industry. So more people start businesses in the building industry, even though they've never run businesses before. There are more people out there who go, well, we want more pay. So now inflation goes up. And so this whole cycle happens because of craziness and stupidity and people not understanding things. But when the shit hits the fan, then people become fearful and then they reinforce their fears, not their stupidity, they reinforce their fears. And so now there'll be a whole bunch of people out there who are going, you know, I wish I never would have bought a house. The property market is crap. I would never invest in the property industry. We got torched, we got burned. But they were the people who did silly stuff in the first things anyway and never really thought through what they were doing. So most people's fears are irrational. You've got to ask, is this really true and what's the data? So please keep asking yourself those questions. Is this really true and what's the data? If you use that, you'll be able to break through your fears pretty quickly. There are other ways of doing it as well. If you've been to our Thrive Time event, you can use the process of potential, which is the mindset and emotional balancing tool that I use that I've created, which I teach everybody. And that's probably going to be an even faster way of neutralizing fears. But just for those of you out there who haven't done our Thrive Time event, you can just grab a pen and paper and ask yourself, is this really true? And then write down, you know, what the data is and keep track of the data. And if you can analyze it, you will eventually break through that pattern. It'll take a lot longer, but you'll eventually get there and break that pattern of fear. Anyway, I hope that helps driven mofos because I'm seeing some people out there get pretty rational with their fears. Don't let fears control you and define your life because you don't want to die having those fears and not doing the things that you want to do in life. So keep pushing hard. Anyway, Driven Mofos, if you haven't grabbed your tickets yet to Thrive Time, go to www.themojomaster.com.au and on our website, you can just scroll down on the homepage. You'll see there you can grab your ticket. As I mentioned, we have people flying from interstate and all over the world. You can stay there. It's a four day event. I guarantee it will change your life. It comes with a money back guarantee because I know it will help you to excel. And we've had all different types of people there from mums and dads. I know the next one, we have a whole family coming along. I think the youngest kid is 14. They're all coming along to learn. We have 
couples come along because they want to get clear on their values and they want to help each other build out their life map so that they can understand what each other's trying to achieve in life and work together. We'll talk about communication, how to communicate that in your intimate relationship. We also help highly driven people build out their success maps in life so that they get a lot of fulfillment, a lot of drive and a lot of clarity, which is what most people need in order to stay consistent with their growth. And I know that our community has a lot of driven people that want to grow hard, but they keep having these peaks and troughs and self-sabotage patterns and procrastinating and not living up to their own expectations. That's what happens when you're unclear. So if you haven't already done so, please go to the website, grab your ticket, and I look forward to seeing you at that event. All right, Driven Mofos, have a great day. Keep pushing hard. And I look forward to you joining me back here on another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. Take care, everybody. Thank you.